Hello, I'm Sarami. Welcome to my studio. I just recently moved here, so this is probably the smallest studio I've had in quite a few years, and I'm loving it. I'm loving having a small studio again. I used to have a factory, and then I kind of transitioned out of having a factory into the live stream, and I still kind of needed the space for my stuff, but I didn't really need all the space for manufacturing, so I finally could move into this smaller space once I kind of tidied up those loose ends and I'm really thrilled with it. It's about 300 square feet, so it's not very big, but it works for me. I know you probably wouldn't organize your sewing room around streaming equipment, but it can give you some ideas about utilizing the middle of your room and how to keep things always at arm's reach so that you're not frustrated or looking for things. And it's pretty rare that I can't find something. Right now, it only happens because I'm kind of new here and I'm like, wait, where did I decide to put that? and this works really really well and so i am going to try and fit two more machines in here and that'll be kind of interesting might change my stream setup but we'll see and i really want to hear what has improved the quality of your life in your studio and what you have found to work really well because i feel like that kind of thing is always changing i wasn't always a home sewist so i'm kind of incorporating all these home sewing things into my kind of factory sewing life and so it's been an interesting transition to kind of mesh the two worlds and kind of still keep all that stuff just in case I want some of it, but it not get in the way of what I'm doing right now. So have a look around and let me know what you think. Ask any questions that you like and enjoy. So I have a pretty compact sewing studio here in this office building and it's dedicated to streaming and making video now. So do I sew at home? Not really. <laughs> so I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a tour. So right here you see um, this thread and binding wall and this is just a DVD shelf that worked really good. Here are my limited number of sewing books and pattern drafting books and um, you know a couple of decorations. My husband got this really fantastic so sign that was made locally here. The only official quilt I've ever made, I've made little quilts, but this one's actually professionally quilted and I took a class and everything on how to do it. <laughs> Pretty proud of it. Doesn't go home because of pets. Um, I have these wonderful floor to ceiling windows. Um, there was just a deer there the other day. They come through here pretty frequently and um, you can see there's a little bit of well, there's a lot actually. You probably can't tell. It probably just looks like green trees, but those are burned from the campfire. Um, and so I'm kind of butting up against where the fire line was here. All right, so this is my sewing station. And it's obviously configured very differently than probably what you have because you're not trying to live stream at the same time. So let's start here. I have my little cart and the cart just has everything that I use the most often, especially on that top shelf. So, you know, I have a pin cushion and some binder clips. I have a little bit of measuring tape, washi tape, that's kind of handy to put on my machine. Um, at the back right here are some of the things that I like to reference is how I pick out binding. I put this little window up, things like that. Um, a few extra tools that I don't really need, they're just there as backup zipper sliders, pins, eyeglass cleaner, my labels. I usually use these little bowls um, made by a gal and that's that hold my like rivets and things like that. The Crayola markers, lip stuff. These are all top stitching threads and my loop turner and a um, measuring tape. So it's pretty compact. On the front here I usually just have a little ruler and a choco liner and this is just, just magnetizes to it. I just got some extra bobbins, so I haven't fit those into my sewing drawer yet. I have a ton of little scissors from having the factory. We never used these, ever. I know, I know, everyone was always like, why don't you use those? We didn't like them. Um, I have a sharpening stone, stone, and like I said, I have tons of these little scissors still. Mask elastic, just 3 8 inch elastic, and the what's left of my labels down here is some webbing I'm using on some bags coming up. Um, a loop turner I can't figure out how to use. Please don't tell me in the comments how to do it. <laughs> it 
it's a whole story. <laughs> and then my um, books for a couple of my machines here. And these are just some extra parts for my machines. And then in my drawer, all I have in here are bobbins, a foot or two, a screwdriver, and then all my needles. And that's all I put in my drawer here. So here's my machine. This is our current project with the Dawn jeans and then a light. Um, and this is my overhead camera. It's kind of off to the side right now. There's the face camera. Um, this is my stream that I look at when I'm streaming. So you can see right now the camera is on the iron right now. Sorry, it's turning yellow just because of the uh, colors that are in there. Here's Phoenix sitting here in all her glory. My usual tools. This is exactly how my machine always pretty much looks. It's threaded with two strands of thread right now because we're in the middle of the Don jeans and I am using two threads to do the top stitching. I just got this buttonhole attachment that we've all been talking about. So it's sitting there because I haven't um, hooked it up yet. So I need to try that out. I've got my microphone, which is always moving around. And, and you can see that my stream here is in the middle. I call this my stream, it's my computer but it is on this swivel and then I turn it around when I want it facing the iron or the pattern table over there. All right, so I have one overhead camera here that I'm kind of struggling with lately. I just got a new kind of arm and I'm not too happy with it. I use a wool mat so that I can have a table and then have some space underneath. Here's my desk. This is Michael's grandmother's old desk. <laughs> and um, this is where I just edit video. It's pretty much the camera or computer I use for all of my work except for recording video and live streaming and my printer. Um, and so this is where I stand to iron. And underneath, I do have a mini ironing board. I do have a full size ironing board, but it's um, not here at the office. I don't really need it. I have a a full legit toolbox down here. And then that basket right here is extra camera paraphernalia. The little blue bin, ironing supplies and things like that. Yes, I know my pencil sharpener is a really weird space, but I just have some limited uh, plugs. That little broken pitcher is just to fill my iron up with water. And then I'm gonna be setting, I'm gonna be changing this to have a cover stitch and a serger and I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna fit it all in, but I will. So let's see, the dress form's usually moving around quite a bit. She goes everywhere. I have a tripod here and a mirror. And then this is my tool drawer. So you can see I have all my little weird things here. I have a lot of this kind of stuff. I'm working in the outdoor industry. I even have one called Weird Stuff. It's not that weird. It's just the stuff I didn't, I only have onesie twosie things, so I didn't want you don't have enough drawers. Um, and then I have these not so attractive, <laughs> what I call gorilla shelves, because that's what they originally were called. And I just have had a lot of those after having the factory. And these are the last two I have here as part of my sewing shop. And um, I have these three bins here. This is product I keep meaning to photograph and sell. Um, this is my felting supplies. This is designs that I've explored maybe don't work out maybe they do maybe there's some potential there maybe there's just something I'm still noodling on in there and up top those are this is all cream zipper by the yard you can kind of see it poking in there and this is black and then these two little bins here are just sliders that's all that is <laughs> um, and then you can see my mini uh, Beatrice form is up there this is an experiment. They made half size forms. So then you start getting into my fabric. And so on this side of my shelves, I have that side and I have this side here. This side, this right here is all um, quilting cotton scraps. And it's the only four that I have where there are double layers. So there's a row back here, that one's kind of messy, and a row up here. So these are greens and blacks. They're sort of color coordinated. You know, so this is pinks, purples, oranges, and then same down here. You know, I have the yellows, creams, and more like multicolored, like rainbow style. And then there's blues and similar there. 
And then below I have two bins here of synthetic. So there's cordures and meshes and things like that. Things for putting together outdoor products. Um, and then all of this bin here and these four bins here are all scraps from garment and sewing projects we have made together. Um, I have two containers of thread that are on the small spools that I hardly use. A bin right there of dyeing and printing for fabric. There's a black box on top of just embroidery floss and things like that. There is my button bin right here. And then right here in the corner is a hundred year old quilt that, quilt that I bought from a friend's fabric sale. This cute ice cream cone that my uncle made me when I was a kid. And then a couple of throw pillows off of Cricket's bed that she doesn't want that I'm just going to use the stuffing for. I have my last roll of stiffener and pattern paper and a speaker there. I'm being very de detailed, aren't I? <laughs> These are all my patterns that are hanging on hooks. Uh, this is kind of a pattern drafter's way to do it. You know, I think I've talked about this before where you have this hole and I have a, a rabbit hole punch for this and then it just fits on the closet dowel so it's really nice it kind of keeps your patterns up and hanging up and um, you can put them in a closet in your bedroom or wherever as well oh there's my full-size ironing board I forgot it does fit here um, and then below are the rest of my findings here I haven't tidied these up but they're relatively organized I have a little less room here to keep them organized this is all my pliers and cutters, my anvil that I got in a needle sharp box actually, and then the little pad that I do it on. This is Velcro. These are ribbon and webbing. Um, these are all the messy bins here. These two right here are just trims and ribbons and things like that, and I just got a ton of new ones from a friend, so I just threw them in here the other day. Um, and same with this. This is all piping she just gave me. Back there is some reflective tape right there. Velcro, um, some twine, Velcro pieces, and some elastic. And then these are zippers, webbing, ribbon, and a little bit of webbing. Some other zipper. I have a lot just from being in the outdoor industry. Uh, different kinds of elastics, the Japanese elastic, and then um, this really fun jacquard style. Um, and then some more elastics still working on getting this whole area organized. These are some extra pattern organizing sleeves and then I have just a couple of rolls of fabric there, a canvas and an oil cloth and, a, and vinyl. So we get over to here and I still have a few samples from some of my patterns up there, bin bin, pocket bucket, project bag, just some things that I have on hand here. And then all the patterns I'm still organizing right here. So you can see these plastic sleeves. And I'm really liking these plastic sleeves, but I think I'm going to put some dividers in. And uh, my whole idea of organizing them was by company. And I, now that I've been using it, I think I'm gonna do it by um, category, like shirts, tops, pants, menswear, things like that. And then have a big cardboard like um, divider that shows kind of like a filing system, you know? All right, so these are all my fabrics to be used. Well, mostly, um, some of them have been used. Um, I have some yarn dyed things here, the napkins that I kind of went crazy and bought at World Market that I'm putting into projects, some of my spoon flower prod fabrics in progress, some needle sharp ones, extras. So these are basically the only fabrics I have to make into things, it's pretty limited. These are all for jammy tops here. It's like, these are all knits. Heavy knits, lightweight knits. And then down here, um, this is kind of what I consider my quilting <laughs> fabrics because they're all rainbow and um, I like rainbow. And these are all cut pieces in squares and strips and things. And then all these are organized. These are flannels, wools, and felt, both. Some prints, just things I like to have on hand for fun fabrics just in case I might need something for a bag or a pocket lining. And down here I have some yarn dyed, um, heavier weight things. This is actually my, my uh, 
fabric that was woven for my mother's maiden name in Scotland based on our last name. Canvases, uh, some of the Don Jean's denim I haven't put in a bin yet. Some more of these prints, lots of Harry Potter extra stuff there. Some other heavyweight. So I like to do it by weight because I've done so much bag making. And then over here, some kind of random things. And these are some fabrics right here that came from other countries that are a little more special. Oh, and then I had a bin on the right that was just all um, for quilting, batting, and things like that. So right here is we're getting into my pattern area. The bin on the floor is a uh, hundred bags I need to sew by June for a project. And then here is my pattern cart. So these are all my pattern drafting tools, um, pencil cup and things like that. I think this is all pretty obvious extra fabric down there for someone who sent it to me. And then here is my pattern table. So I obviously am not gonna have these two machines here. I just got them. They're still getting a home in the studio. There's my home machine. And then these three bags are cut pieces of chicken boots, things that I never sewed. A bin of extra stiffener. This is my fabric scrap bin that I make into dog beds and things like that. These are all lining, prototyping fabric, spare bits of interfacing. And anytime I'm making a muslin, usually the fabric's in there, or one of these extra bolts here, and that's all those are, it's just interfacing and sample fabric. And I usually put empty bins down here. Um, and then these are my works in progress. Pinnacle top, um, that is the block I'm going to make there. I really want to make peds, you know, the little no socks. Um, matching uh, shams for the duvet I made last year. My rainbow quilt that's almost done. Some lining fabric a friend just gave me with her stuff. Two dresses I'm going to make. That, and like I said, that's the pinnacle top. And then this is, I don't usually cut with shears, but they're here because sometimes they're handy. I have pattern scissors and then a few of my rulers. And these are all just hanging on the pattern hooks I was showing you on the closet down over there. They're just upside down. I just took off the end. This thing, this is what the pattern hook looks like right here. I just remove this little thing sometimes and fasten it to rulers and hang it up. Just makes it a little easier. I usually would have a lot of these on hand. I have a couple sitting here, a couple of these see-throughs. I really like a nice, clean, sharp one. Um, and then I have two tables side by side here with one cutting mat. And the cutting mat was actually designed to fit one of these tables that was a slightly different length. And when I moved here, I could make this table longer. Even though the mat doesn't fit, that's okay. It's big enough for the stream. This is kind of a small table, in my opinion, for what, what I like. I really like my really big ones, but I just don't have the room, the room here. This is some fabric that my friend gave me. Like I said, my friends gave me a bunch of fabric. And then there's my stream. This is what I look like, look at, and then here's um, some overhead cameras here, and then I move the microphone over here as well. So this is pretty, and I move the box light, my pattern weights, and I, this is pretty much always like this. Like I have it kept set up. I don't usually have extra machines there. Um, I put in, I splurged on the rugs because I really wanted to dampen the noise for me and for my neighbors, and I put real carpet padding under me. So it is a little gushy, and that's why my machine. Uh, the camera over my machine now vibrates and it's because the um, machine is vibrating because it's so soft underneath. <laughs> I never thought that would happen so. And oh and this is the wooden arm that holds all of my cameras. It's just not very appealing. Mostly what I do is cord management just like you do at home with your TV. But I've got it now that I can swivel it and the cords don't get tangled. Thanks, Velcro. <laughs> All right, well, I hope you enjoyed my tour and that I showed you everything. Once I watched it, I was like, oh, I forgot to point that out. I forgot that point that out. But I'm going to have another video on how I organize things in a little bit more of a compartment style um, video. And if you're interested in a lot of things that are in here, shamelessly, I have them linked in the description as an affiliate link. So you can check them out. Even if you don't buy it through my link, at least we'll give you a little more information like on the rabbit punch that I use to punch the holes. 
to hang my patterns on the rack and things like that. I know that those are kind of like a less viewed item that you don't get to see very often. And so I did link it so you can see there. All my machines are linked down there as well. And if you have any questions, please let me know. And please tell me what are the great things you've done in your studio to make your quality of life really good. I'm pretty blessed. I love this studio. I'm really thankful. And it's because of my viewers that I'm able to kind of keep this stream going. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. And please like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.